and welcome to this week's edition of the Royal News Show. I'm Danielle Valley. And I'm Sasha Voss. Tonight, we'll tell you what's going on around campus. We'll also have your campus sports with Matt and Lauren. When we return, university police are investigating a crime that took place early this morning. We'll have all that and more when we return here on the Royal News Show. To you who studied a what a beautiful day at the University of Scranton. But not everything is as beautiful as it seems. This is what a typical day is like for me. People pass by me all the time, but they also pass by something else. Why don't people care about where they throw their trash? Hey, wait, what's going on? Why would you oh, pick hey, me Connor. up and not the trash? Do you want something interesting? That to throw out your garbage? No, it isn't. People on campus should be more like him. Morning, we're here with Dr. Kim Padlick, who just got back from her. I'm going to go throw us in the trash. She's not going to recycle? <laughs> this is a job for Recycle Michael. <laughs> You don't have to be a hero to recycle. University police are investigating an assault and robbery that happened early this morning. Police say two students were walking on Wensley Court toward Mulberry Street when they were approached and then assaulted by a group of five males. An iPhone and a wristwatch was stolen from one victim. Police describe the suspects as short male with long hair worn in an afro, another hair man with long blonde hair wearing a gray American Eagle hooded sweatshirt, and another wearing a light blue hooded sweatshirt, khaki pants, and sneakers. The suspects fled in an unknown direction. Both victims were treated at a local hospital for minor injuries and released. Scranton police are asking anyone with additional information to contact, contact them at 348-4141. The Office of Career Services has partnered up with the Career Services Marketing Committee to help sponsor the Career Services Carnival tomorrow afternoon from 1 in the afternoon to 4 in the afternoon. This event will be located in the Founders Green, which is next to Brennan Hall. At the event, students will have the chance to network with both employees and alumni. The carnival is a great way to win prizes, enjoy some free food, and socialize with other students, staff, and faculty. It is free of charge and will be a carnival full of fun and games too. The Friends of the Weinberg Memorial Library at the University of Scranton are sponsoring a book and plant sale on Saturday, April 28th from 9 in the morning to 9 in the evening and on Sunday, April 29th from noon until 4 in the afternoon. The sale will include used nonfiction and fiction hardcover and paperback books, plants, and tag sale items. The sale takes place in the Heritage Room on the fifth floor of the Weinberg Memorial Library with all proceeds benefiting the Friends of the Weinberg Memorial Library Endowment. The library is currently accepting donations of clean, properly stored books, which may be dropped off on the first floor of the library. They are not accepting encyclopedias and magazines. For more information on this event, contact Barbara Evans at barbara.evans at scranton.edu or call 570-941-4078. The university players will be performing A Year with the Frog and a Toad. 
April 27th to April 29th from 8 in the evening to 10 in the evening. This musical focuses on the life of two best friends, Frog and Toad, who travel together. The play is open to students, faculty and staff, and the public. Admission for students, faculty or staff is $5. It will be performed in the McDade Center for Literary and Performing Arts, Royal Theatre. For more information about this event, contact the university players at players at scranton.edu. On Monday, April 30th, William J. Brady will be speaking in honor of Earth Week. Brady is president and CEO of Maskama Corporation, a member of the University of Scranton Board of Trustees. The event will take place in the De Naples Center, room 401, and in Leo Moskowitz Theater from 6 in the evening to 7 in the evening. Admission is free and open to the public. For more information on this event, contact Linda Walsh at lynda.walsh at scranton.edu or call 570-941-7520. Students have been enjoying the new Mulberry Fitness Center for a few months now. Let's take a look. a movie on campus where well, USPB gives you the chance. We'll have that story and more when we return on the Royal News Show. Stay tuned. So, April, yeah? you know your charger's still using energy when it's plugged into the wall, right? Yeah, but uh, that's not my charger. I don't even have a cell phone.
millions of kids are using their energy wisely. What's your excuse? The biology department will present a seminar entitled Ecological Immunology A Bat White Nose Syndrome on Tuesday, May 1st from 11.30 in the morning till 12.30 in the afternoon. The seminar will be presented by Marina Moore, PhD, postdoctoral fellow, Department of Biology, Bucknell University. The seminar is free and open to the public. The event will take place in the Loyola Science Center, room 103. For more information on this event, contact Rob Waldeck at robert.waldeck at scranton.edu. Are you looking for a fun event to attend with your friends one evening? USPB has arranged for the showing of the movie One for the Money next Thursday, May 3rd at 9 in the evening. The movie, featuring ac actress Katherine Heigl, is about a newly unemployed woman who takes on a new job, which requires her to track down an unwanted local. One for the Money will be shown on the Gannon Lavis McCormick patio, and admission is free. For more information, contact USPB at USPB at Scranton.edu. The University Reading Series presents a reading by prize-winning poet and writer Joel Beale on Wednesday, May 2nd at 8 in the evening in the Studio Theater of the McDade Center for Literary and Performing Arts. The event is free and open to the public. For more information about the University Reading Series, call 941-7619. Writing a research paper, working on a research project, you can win $500 by telling, telling how you used its resources to complete your project. This prize is des designed to attract the outstanding research projects from courses taught in departments across the University of Scranton campus. It recognizes excellence in research projects that show evidence of significant knowledge in the methods of research and information gathering process, and the use of library resources, tools, and services. Two prizes will be awarded, one to an undergraduate student or group, and one to a graduate student or group. Completed application materials must be submitted by four in the evening tomorrow. Father Quinn invites all students to the Pedro Society of Jesus Award Ceremony honoring Stephanie Russell. Stephanie Russell is the Vice President for Mission and Ministry at Marquette University, where she was responsible for promoting the university's mission and Jesuit identity. Russell oversees the Faber Center for Ignatian Spirituality and Campus Ministry. In addition to her time at Marquette, Russell has served 11 years as the provincial assistant for the Wisconsin province of the Society of Jesus and is a founding member of the Ignatian Associates, a lay community of more than 100 men and women, living in the spirit of St. Ignatius. She is also a member of the Magi's National Faculty Retreat and co-founder of the Ignatian Collegiate Program, a development opportunity to provide foundational knowledge to administrators at Jesuit universities around the country. Russell will be speaking Thursday, May 3rd in Brennan Hall, Rose Room 509 from 11.30 in the morning until 12.30 in the afternoon. For more information on this event, contact Tara Seely at tara.seely at scranton.edu or call 570-941-7502. It's that time of year again. The 13th Annual President's Breakfast will take place on Monday, May 14th from 9 at night until 11 at night. We will welcome Father Quinn to his first President Breakfast. The event will take place on the third floor of the Naples Center and their hope is to support students as they prepare for final exams. The Center for Health Education and Wellness, as well as the Dining Services, asks that you volunteer, st volunteer and staff in the event. Volunteers needed in greeting, working at a few of the grills, beverages, beverage stands and cleaning. If you would like to volunteer, please please respond to Barbara Egan at barbara.egan at scranton.edu or contact Chu at 941-4253 by Friday, May 4th. The time slots, slots are as follows, 8.30 at night until 10 at night and 10 at night until 11 at night. Have you seen the Royal Television Network's game show, No or No? Let's take a look at the ins and outs of the show. Royal News Network. And I am required by the state of Pennsylvania to introduce our host, the man with all smile and no style, John Nemec. Yeah. 
Thank you, studio audience, for that sweet wonderful... We had people to clap. Yeah, I know. Thank you for that wonderful round of applause, studio audience. Welcome to Nowhere Know. I'm your host, John Nemec. This is the only show that sees how well you know your best friend or significant other. Inspiration for Nowhere Know. Well, I took, uh, I took television production last semester, and I really enjoyed it. And I, know I, I knew I wanted to go into broadcast, and I work at the radio station already, so I said, hey, why not try my hand at television? And the TV station, they needed uh, shows. So I approached uh, Nicolina and Nina, I forget who, both of them probably, and asked you, hey, you know you guys don't have a game show? I'd love to host a game show. And they said, that will be great. So that's how it started. Uh, game shows are just a lot of fun in general, I think. And I think this is an easy format to do for uh, a student, uh, the, the student community on campus, because we don't have a budget. Why don't you tell them what they'll be playing for tonight? Well, John, as per usual, we will be playing for nothing because this show has no budget. We have no money. We have as much money as the number of successful relationships you have had. Wow! Thank you! We don't have prizes and stuff. We can't give it, you know, huge cash prizes. This is a lot of fun because it's not, it's not, I mean, we could do trivia if we wanted to, but it's a lot more fun to uh, almost learn about their personal lives in a sense. And, you know, they could joke about it on stage. I could joke about it with them rather than, you know, some random trivia question. We could st it'd be st it would still be fun, but I think, I think this has a different element to it that I think students would enjoy more. Basically, the way the show works is that I bring in three, uh, three uh, groups of partners, and then I, uh, I take one partner from each group out into the hallway, and then I ask three, car three partners questions. We switch up the partners, and whoever, whoever, if, they get, if they're, both their answers match, then they get points and they win. So let's say, you know, I'll ask, Susie, if you were to be arrested for a crime, what crime would you be arrested for? Um, probably, like, hitting someone with my car. Wow! <laughs> Hit and run, well, we manslaughter. Went, we, went from, we went from speeding <laughs> to trespassing <laughs> to hitting somebody like real car. crimes. <laughs> what did you put, Brittany? Loud singing. <laughs> I mean, she could no, be I loud singing in her car and then she well, doesn't like, notice. We decided on camp it. It's pretty simple. And the questions are a lot better than that, though. If you want to participate in the show, because we always need contestants, um, you can contact me. My email is john, J-O-H-N, dot nemec, N-I-E-M-I-E-C, at scranton.edu. You can just send me an email. Say, hey, I want to be in the show. Uh, yeah, and I'll try to put you in one week. Other than that, um, rock on. Then Ryan May report. Remember, you can catch Know or Know 8.30 Monday night on the Royal Television Network. The summer is coming soon. Students that are eligible for work study through financial aid who would like a summer job should apply to work at the Weinberg Memorial Library. Applicants must have hours between 8 in the morning and 4.30 in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. The job may transition to work in the circulation desk in the fall. If you are interested, please contact Pat Savitz at 570-941-6139 or email at patricia.savitz at scranton.edu. We'll have all your campus sports with Matt and Lauren when we return. Stay with us. Yeah. You know your charger's still using energy when it's plugged into the wall, right? Yeah, but uh, that's not my charger. I don't even have a cell phone. Millions of kids are using their energy wisely. What's your excuse? Brandon.
you think you do? What do you mean? That you that easy that charger without the phone still wasting energy. Well, maybe I don't care about wasting energy. Hey, maybe I don't care about your phone. All right, jeez. Sorry, I had energy I could have wasted. Apparently. What do you think you're doing? What do you mean? That you that you see that charger without the phone still wasting energy. Well, maybe I don't care about wasting energy. Hey, maybe I don't care about your phone. All right, jeez. Sorry, I had energy I could have wasted. Apparently. And now Chalk Talk with Matt Salvatore and Lauren Junta. Lauren? Thanks, Danielle and Sasha. We'll start tonight with softball. The Lady Royals softball team took game one of a landmark conference doubleheader against Catholic University Saturday, April 21st. Senior pitcher Christine Capallo rebounded from her first and only loss of the season, allowing only four hits and giving up no runs, securing Scranton's 1-0 lead. The, game on, the game's only run came in the sixth inning when senior Kelly Zaccheo, who was hit by a pitch, advanced to second and scored on a single to center field by junior Jamie Shackles. Freshman outfielder Gabby Santorelli threw out a runner at the plate in the seventh inning to end the game. The Royals did not have as much luck in the night game, however, losing 10-3. to Catholic had nine hits and were led by freshman catcher Rose Shaver and junior Mel Galea, who each had two hits. With the win in the first game, Scranton has secured a spot in the Landmark Conference tournament berth for the third straight season. The University of Scranton baseball team routed the defenders of Baptist Bible College 32-7 a week ago. Scranton piled on the offense early and the game was out of hand by the first inning. The Royals posted 15 runs in the first frame. The Royals were back on the diamond this past weekend as they traveled to Madison, New Jersey to take on Drew University in a three-game series with serious playoff implications. Scranton fell to Drew 3-2 in the first game of the series despite a complete game performance from junior southpaw Bobby Delapola. Going into the final two games of the series with Drew Saturday, the Royals needed two victories. So who better to throw than senior Rocky Sawyer? Sawyer delivered again for Scranton, earning his third straight complete game victory in a 5-3 win over Drew. Sophomore Eric Pizzico finished the game with three hits and two RBIs, while senior first baseman Mark Grambo had two RBIs. Tim LeCompte and Mike Umerich each scored twice. Drew pulled out game two of the day, the final game of the series, with a 3-1 victory. The Royals banged out 27 hits Wednesday to win their sixth game in the last eight. Scran posted eight runs in the first inning to jump out to an early lead. Eddie Ravert had four hits and five RBIs, including his first career home run. Mike Gaeta and Mark Rambo each had four hits apiece. Gaeta helped out the offense with his team-leading fifth home run of the year. Scranton led 12-1 after three innings, but Wilkes staged a furious comeback to tie the game. The tides had changed as Wilkes had the, held the Royals scoreless from the fourth inning to the tenth inning. The Royals then exploded again in the tenth inning, putting up seven runs in the top of the frame. Anthony Ducknowski and freshman Ross Danzig added two run singles in the inning as the Royals stretched their lead out once again. Freshman pitcher Mike Villegas allowed one run while striking out three in two innings to pick up his second career victory. The Royals are back on the diamond Saturday, April 28th when they open a pivotal three-game landmark conference series against Catholic University with a game of a doubleheader starting at 1 p.m. in Washington, D.C. The men's lacrosse team fell short against Goucher College, despite having a five-goal rally to cut Goucher's lead to one. Senior attacker Daniel Slade led the Royals with four goals, followed by senior attacker Kyle Frank with two goals and an assist. With the loss, Scranton is now 8-5 and five overall and 2-3 and three in Landmark Conference, and will play their final league game Saturday, April 28th, against Catholic University at Fitzpatrick Field at 2.30 in the afternoon. Jill D. Polaris scored three goals, including one in the 55th minute on a free position shot to defeat Elmira College 6-5 last Thursday in women's lacrosse. The Royals scored four of the game's final five goals after falling behind 4-2. With the win, the Royals pick up their 11th win of the season, reaching that plateau for the first time since 2006. 
They say the post is a goalie's best friend, and that proved exactly right for Drew goalie Christina Carlini. With Scran trailing 11 to 10 and just 20 seconds left on the clock, Kerry Sullivan hit the post on a free position shot as the Royals' rally came up just a goal short. The Royals fell behind early in the second half, 10 to 6, and found themselves fighting back the rest of the game. With 13 minutes remaining, Scran cut the margin to just one goal before Drew scored again to extend the lead to two. Emily Goss then scored again for the Royals, but the scoring would stop there. On the day, Goss scored three goals and Sullivan and Dee Polera each added two. Scran also received a goal and an assist from junior Caitlin Lazorco and a goal each from freshman midfielder Emily Mulligan and junior attacker Deanna Giorno. Despite the loss, the Royals will still qualify for the Landmark Conference Tournament and will likely be the third or fourth seed. Scran will be back in action Saturday at Fitzpatrick Field as they take on four-time defending champion and the 15th nationally ranked Catholic University Cardinals. Golf and tennis when we return here on Chalk Talk. Stay with us. Yeah. What did you do? What do you mean? That you that you that charger without the phone still wasting energy. Well, maybe I don't care about wasting energy. Hey, maybe I don't care about your phone. All right, jeez. Sorry, I had energy I could have wasted. Apparently. Uh, this is my uh, this is my friend Rob from Michigan. What's up? He's a teenager. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty cool. Woo! Hey, hey, you want to slow down there? No. Really? Oh, okay. <laughs> what are you doing? We're shooting a viral video. <laughs> Hold on, I want to see this. Hey, this is his last five minutes on Earth. <laughs> a little something to mom. Say something to mom. How about goodbye, mom? Sorry. <laughs> The men's tennis team won their third straight match against the United States Merchant Marine Academy Saturday, April 21st, improving their record to 7-4 overall and 5-1 and in the Landmark Conference. The Royals won two of three doubles and four of six singles, going 6-3 six, six and three on the day. Junior Joe Mora was, won his second straight match and his 38th of his career with a 6-0, 6-2 win. In doubles, Junior Bennett Kelly and Tim McGurn moved from moved to 9-2 and two on the season with, eight and, with an 8-2 and two victory. And freshman Ryan Baer and Kevin Perdaska earned their first career win in doubles with an 8-2 victory. The Royals are now the number two seed in the Landmark Conference. The women's tennis team knocked out Drew University in the Landmark Conference semifinals on Tuesday, April 23rd, advancing the Royals to the finals Saturday, April 26th against top-seeded Susquehanna University. Freshmen Megan Azlazia and Nicole Mahaffey each had a pair of wins for Scranton. After dropping the first set, Azlahaki came back to win 6-0 and 6-2, while, while Mahaffey won in straight sets 6-2, 6-2. The pair also recorded a win at number, at number three doubles. Sophomore Stephanie Bukowski had a key win for the Royals after rallying back from a one-set deficit for a 3-6, 6-4, 6-1 win. The Royals are in the Landmark Conference Championship for the second straight season and third time in five years. The University of Scranton golf team finished fourth overall at the Empire 8 Conference Championships this weekend in Hershey. Scranton as a team fought all weekend to catch up with eventual champion St. John Fisher, but Fisher's consistent low scores were too much for Scranton. Highlighting the weekend for the Royals was junior Chris Shank. Shank finished fourth overall among all contestants and earned himself a spot on the all-conference team. The Royals finished this season with a record of 10-1. Their only loss came on April 2nd against Fairleigh Dickinson Florham. On behalf of everyone at RTN, we'd like to congratulate the golf team on an excellent season. That's all, for, that's all we have for you for this week's of sports. For Chalk Talk, I'm Lauren Junta. And I'm Matt Salvador. Back to you, Danielle and Sasha. Thanks, Matt and Lauren. Well, that's all we have for you on this week's edition of the World News Show. I'm Danielle Valley. And I'm Sasha Voss. Good night. <laughs>